Pastores, Guatemala, the handmade boot capital of Central America, where, as the city motto says, leather is art. where I actually managed to make my own leather, some blue vegetable tent, goat skin. And while my plan was initially to go to like a boot factory in America and have them turn into a pair of boots for me, I met Michael at Adelante Shoes in Mexico and he said, you know what would be even cooler than that? He said, Nick, you've reviewed every major boot company in America. We think it's about time you come to Guatemala and learn how to make a pair of boots yourself. This is the boot. This is it. That is the Adelante Havana boot. Have you ever made a pair of boots before? I've seen people make boots before in big factories. This is a little bit different. Uh, the Adelante boots and shoes that we make here are actually likely the most handmade boots that you can find in the market under say a thousand dollars. Wow, so I've really got my work cut out for me. I, did, I do have my first pair of boots. They're going to be one of the hardest to make boots, huh? Yep. you got to cut the pieces by hand, skive them by hand. you got to learn to sew. And then we're going to last them and finish them by hand as well. It's quite a process. <sighs> well, sounds like a bit of a started. Let's get to it. <laughs> Hola, mi nombre es Nelson. Soy cortador de Adelante. El día de hoy le enseñaremos a Nick cómo se corta un par de habanas. Acá tenemos nuestros moldes. A esto le llamamos pala, lengua, caño, talonera. Esto va acá, acá, acá. Y esto va en la parte de adentro ya cuando tenemos nuestras piezas formadas. Mejor? Mejor que eso? Oh, si sí, es mejor. Oh, bien. I'm learning. I'm doing well. <laughs> I'm saying that in English because uh, Nelson can't contradict me. What do, what do you think, Nelson? Is this pretty good? Okay? Más o menos. Más o menos. Más o menos. All right, that sounds like a very, very full-throated endorsement of my abilities. All right, I have successfully cut all the pieces for my boot and also the lining as well, which is going on the inside. Next, we are going to be skiving. Uh, Nelson, what is skiving? Okay. Acá, bien. Okay. Alright, cool. So, skiving or despastar in Spanish, this is intended to kind of flatten the leather out a bit on the parts of the upper where it's going to get stitched because this flattening makes it easier to stitch it. Do I have that right? Yeah, and you just don't, you don't want like a big leather overlap with like two beefy layers of leather like that. So if you skive them down on the edges, they are, it's a, a thinner overlap and a thinner edge. And it's easier to put together. Yeah, yeah, easier to put together, but it's mostly like a comfort thing for my customers. It's like an aesthetic and a comfort thing. You got it. All right. Okay. And that is it for getting everything ready to be put together. So next up we're going to glue and sew. Just to us? Okay. Come here, sir. Alright, day two. I finished the gluing. What, what's the next step? So the next step is to sew the individual pieces of the uppers together. 
uh, so that you have completed uppers, sewn, and ready to be lasted. Wow. I think this is the highest risk part of the process that you're gonna do, just because you only really get one chance to sew it. Uh, <laughs> you know, once the, the needle holes are in there, they're in there. So if we mess this up, you gotta start all over again. So I went from the like the preschool cutting of shapes yeah. to the most difficult part of the process. Yeah, it's a bit of a jump, but it's a bit of a jump. You have Weicho ready to teach you. Cool. And uh, how's his English? Uh más o menos. <laughs> Great. All right. Okay. Let's let's, let's see how this goes. <laughs> All right. Esto lo que está aquí es para detener la velocidad para que no se vaya. Es para ir la velocidad. Does that make sense? Entonces, no. ahí... <laughs> okay. yeah, there you go. It's such a small difference between very slow and yeah. very fast. <laughs> it's really, it's really hard to get. <laughs> Should I take my shoes off? <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's it. Now you're getting the hang of it, though. Alright, I'll see you guys a little faster. Too right far. I'm too nervous. You're doing great right now. I see you. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> Look at that. That was the most stressed I've ever been in my entire life. And now I have to do it all over again in the exact same place because I need two lines of stitching. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good, It is. It's right on the line. It's perfect. Yeah, this is good, man. So this is Luis's. This one is mine. As you can see, mine got a little confused here. I didn't manage to. I went too far outside the line on one of them. So we didn't do the double stitch all the way up on this one. Unlike the, the very perfect one that Luis did in about a billionth of the time it took me. Nonetheless, for someone who never touched a sewing machine before today, I'm, I think I'm doing pretty well. I think I did pretty well here. I'm sorry? Más, más para arriba. Uh -huh. Ah, ahí, okay. ahí, ahí. La línea. If this wasn't lined, it'd be half as much work. So then we're gonna smash some holes for the eyelets. This is for the speed hooks, this is for the regular eyelets. It's two different sizes. Eyelets. Yeah, just for a quick shot of it. Just because the, the, it's because it's starting to take shape now. Jose, I keep thinking we're finished, and there's like five more things to do. <laughs> there it is. All finished. That's it. Finish. No. Finish. So what's next? Alright, 
So day three, yeah. how are we doing so far? This, so this is my stitching work from yesterday. Um, what do you think? I've never touched a sewing machine before. Uh, how, do, how do you like it? I think for your first time having never touched a sewing machine, this is really good. Um, I think it'll hold up perfectly fine. I don't know if it'll pass our QC, Mike. If you want to come take a look at this, maybe give your opinion. I mean, I'll be honest, I, I wouldn't hire you, <laughs> but this will hold up. Más o menos. It'll Mas hold, okay, that's what's important to me, as long as they went full yeah. apart of my feet. It'll hold up. What, so what's the next step? We've done the cutting out, we've done the sewing. This seemed pretty high skill to me, this, this sewing. I'm feeling pretty good about myself. What's, what's yeah. the next step? Yeah, I think uh, we're moving into the lasting of the boots. Okay. Um, and they're hand lasted. Uh, so this is, this next step in the process is a whole thing. Uh, you know, hundreds, I would say, at least a couple hundred different steps, lots of skill. Uh -huh. uh, you're gonna be doing most of it with a knife and a hammer. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see how that goes for you. All right, so uh, I haven't done the hottest pot yet, is what you're telling me? Not yet. I would say that um, the lasting process is, it's like an art form, right? What you were doing with the sewers, skill. It's, it's learning the machine and whatever else. This is an art. It's something developed over time, but you're going to have a good teacher. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I think this is where like the true craft and the craftsmanship comes in. Okay. Well, so. hopefully I can muddle my way through enough to get a pair of boots. Um, let's go meet my teacher, Mike. Awesome. Okay. All right. Have fun, guys. <laughs> Vamos, hacia the soul. The letter and the soul. Okay. Okay. I did it. Look at that. La bandera. Let's touch. <laughs> That's what you call a stacked leather heel. <laughs> <laughs> it's not great. <laughs> All right, so here I am with the production line. It's actually like pretty nice compared to a lot of other places I've seen where boots are getting made. It's nice and airy. You can see like all the nice like greenery and everything out here. These guys get to work in. Uh, Karen has helped me to cut all my pieces off the heels. Here are my outsoles. Uh, this one, where is it? This is the nice one that Karen did. This is the one where you can tell maybe an amateur did this one. But now, like this is the rib, this is the welts. I now have like all the pieces I need to make a pair of boots. I'm just gonna do the lasting next, which is like, again, famously the toughest one. So let's see if I can learn it before I have to leave Guatemala. Luego, Agarras el martillo, le das igual acá, pega toda la platilla y pones tus dedos aquí para poner. There it is there. This goes over here. Sí. Alright, the nail is the right flat. Okay, alright. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sin nervios, sin nervios. Is it a nervous? I'm not nervous, I'm incompetent. Yes. Vienes con la cuchilla y tallas. Okay. 
you, can, you can't even tell which one is the master craftsman and which one is just learning this today. You can't even tell. Okay, I said Marcin and Nueva. First one's a fail. <laughs> Alright, yes. se se second try, I did it. I pulled it up. So what we're doing now is we're gluing the canvas rib on, uh, which will help us attach the welt. So that's why you, you kind of rough this up so it's easier to glue stuff to it. If it was totally flat and slick, it's harder for stuff to stick. Salud. ¿Cómo se dice orilla, Roxana? H, right? Aquí. Levantas. Aquí. Vas poco a poco. What did you do? How did you do this? So this is a 270 degree good gear well. So it's not going around the heel. The difference is that some guys like it aesthetically because like a 270 degree welt is less, uh, it's like less bulky around the heel, so it's largely an aesthetic thing. There's some arguments that it's a tad less durable than a 360 degree Goodyear welt, but you know, for the purposes of like walking around a city, the difference is probably negligible. And we're now, this is also called skiving. We're doing this, we're like cutting it down so that it doesn't irritate the foot so much once it's wrapped around the heel. Just one of a billion steps that I had never foreseen in the creation of a boot. But apparently, this happens in every boot. One is not like the other. <laughs> Leather lined boots make everything a lot more laborious, complicated, and annoying for your boot maker. Does everyone know that? What is this for? So it's, you're gonna mount the shoe almost like it's being worn. Um, so what you're doing right now is just you're putting the laces on and everything, tightening it up. The foam is to protect it while it's on the shoe. Yes. Alright, let the record show he's laughing at how badly I've tied a boot of all things. We're going to pull it tight at the front, but it's also going to be kind of flat. Alright. Yep. And then pull. Alright. Alright. Okay. Okay. Holding it like that? Yeah. Okay. Now I'm gonna nail it. Come on. Don't bend. Don't bend. Damn it! So what you're doing is you're getting the cut position onto the shoe last. So plus my shoe. So more or less what you want to do is make sure that it's centered at the back, centered at the front. And what you're going to do is you're going to end up stretching this over at all the different points yeah. along the, the shoe last so that it's, the cut is positioned properly and then you're going to apply glue on the inside. And then you'll trim back the cut, the excess, from the upper and then you'll start on the actual construction. So right now you're getting everything positioned. This nice is, and tight. Yeah, nice and tight. So this is one of the, the true like artistry portions of it is ensuring that this thing is, all the measurements are right, that this is the right elevation from the bottom, yada, yada, yada. So before too long, you're gonna break out a ruler and start measuring things. Why is it so hot? <laughs> I feel like I should make it clear here that while I am doing a lot of hammering here and nailing and lasting, it is only under the guidance of the uh, master shoemaker Ronald here that I know where to pull and where to put the hammers and when the leather is tight enough and when it isn't. Because there have been 50 times during this process 
Well, I think that we've lost it as much as we can and the leather's as tight as it can be and the shoe's totally done. And he'll point to some obscure thing that looks totally tight, but it could be pulled a little bit tighter that with my untrained eye, I never would have noticed. So like, this is the story of me doing a boot, but like, even though my hands are crafting, <laughs> my hands are putting things together here, uh, without the guidance of someone with years and years of specialized experience, um, this wouldn't be happening. So like, I just need to make it clear that uh, I didn't learn to make a boot in a week. It was only with the help of people telling me what they know with their experience. <laughs> but starting to take place, take shape rather. But there's still all this to go. So we're gonna be here for a while and it's gonna be super boring to watch. So I'm gonna fast forward for you. <laughs> I mean, the vast majority of companies last with machines. I don't know. Um, I, I'm, I'm not aware of any other brands that make handmade leather footwear and hand last under a thousand dollars a pair. Well, right now, I kind of wish you guys did last with machines, because boy howdy, is this a long process? I literally just started. <laughs> you, you have so much <laughs> left to go. <laughs> I feel like the average person has no idea how much glue is in this shoe. <laughs> the leather line, if this was just an online boot, I would have saved hours and a lot of glue. So what's this? This, this, is, this, is, this is canvas, right? Yeah. Uh, so that's like uh, toe reinforcement. The tar re tres. Bainty tres. This is my 23 year old dad here. Like he'll, he'll be like, good job, buddy. Hey. And then he'll like fix everything I was doing. You did a great job, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I did it. Mas fuego. Mas fuego. Check that out. Just a couple of guys and they're burning shoes. What's up, man? It's a bonding experience. <laughs> Day four. Yesterday, Nick lasted the boots, and today he's gonna Goodyear welt them by hand. How you feeling about that? Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty. I'm, I don't know if excited is the right word for it. It turns out that to use a Goodyear welt machine, although it's much, much faster than hand welting, it's a skill that I can't just pick up after a few minutes of teaching. And even if I tried, you know, th maybe I could try it out, but there's an extremely high chance that I would just like run the stitches the wrong way and destroy the entire thing. So instead, I'm doing the much more laborious hand welting, uh, which a lot of people prefer for various reasons. Uh, but um, yeah, so I'm gonna be hand welting the boots instead. That's the plan for today. That's the plan. And what have you learned so far <clears throat> in the process of getting the boot to this point? Yeah. Well, I've, I've learned that uh, when you're cutting out the pattern pieces, you want to like uh, hold it like a pencil, the, the knife, and also pushing inward a bit to, uh, to, to, do the, to properly do it. Uh, I've also learned how to use a sewing machine and like the right way to apply the pressure and how much you have to hold the thing on the side to slow it down enough to do the extra lines of stitching. Uh, yesterday, what I learned, the last thing yesterday and how to cut the scabbing. And um, I also learned that uh, at every point of this, it's really easy to tell which is the boot that uh, a craftsman has been working on and which one I have been working on. All these like torn pieces of leather here, all the bunched up pieces of leather up there. I am very much an amateur in this whole situation, but I'm really liking the fact that we've got like one boot done properly and one boot done by me, so we can like have a nice comparison at the end of it. But nonetheless, the boots are starting to look like boots. Boots without soles, but they do look like boots now. So uh, yeah, we're in the home stretch and uh, I'm excited to learn the hand well. Awesome. All right, yeah. let's do it. Let's do it. Done? Okay. Okay. Despacio. Despacio. Yeah. All right, this isn't so bad. This is my fa famous last words. <clears throat> the upper leather and the rib to 
together. Presumably so they're all easier to sew together. Although it turns out I cut a little bit too much leather off of the inside of the boot. Which is possible might get me into trouble later on. This is this is where I cut I cut way too much leather. I got cocky. This is at the end of the job of cutting the leather. And if you recall, I said, oh, this is pretty easy at the beginning. And that's uh that's why you should never get cocky. Because then you'll ruin your entire project. <laughs> don't don't film him fixing my mistakes. I did the whole boot. <laughs> <laughs> This is why I wore glasses today because there's a lot of very, very fine stuff. When you when you're this close and you have to judge distance really, really precisely, contact lenses uh, they're harder. Okay, see. So what we've done is we punched holes all the way around uh, the shoe here, right? The perimeter of the shoe. Then you pull the needle through, then you pull it through the leather welt here. So this is the welt, this, this is where it is. And then you just do that over and over and over and over again, all the way around, and then you've got your welt. Now again, ordinarily, that would be done with the machine, Goodyear welting, uh, but I don't have enough time to learn how to do a Goodyear welt without risking destroying the shoe. So, hand welting, this is it. Come here, sir. Okay. okay. Yep. Wait, where does this go? S to Dundee? Oh, you mean more. You mean more? Yeah. I mean, good. Now I do this 50 million more times. And then I have my well. So this is Ronald's, nice and even. And per usual on mine, if you, if you get real nice and close here, my thread is going up and down like a dumb little uh, child's art project. Now, I was aware of this and I kind of thought it was cute and funny. I didn't mind having an imperfect boot. But Ronald has explained that uh, if it's going up and down like that, then it's likely when we introduce the machine later to complete the soling, it'll tear the thread and the sole will just like come off of the boot. So, uh, now we're redoing it. And well. Uno otra vez. ¿Qué vamos a hacer? Eh, vamos a poner relleno. Ajá. Sí, Cambrillón. Shank. Y costillo. And something. Uh -huh. All right. Pues, We're going to do the something. Encima, All right. Encima del cambrillón. Okay. All right. For the record, I'm using a brush because they're supposed to use brushes, but just no one does because they're in the habit of using their fingers. The sí. shank. This, this one I understand. Ahora le aplicamos pegamento. This is actually kind of more interesting because we've run out of good translators, so now I'm just like doing things not really knowing what's going to be next. But it, it makes it like a bit more exciting to not know what I'm doing. <laughs> le damos I've come so close to cutting my throat like 50 times. Okay, this side. This side. That's the word I've heard more than any other. Not that much pressure because that got straight into your guts. <laughs> In a smoother way. You can apply it right now first, but don't need your hand. Don't, don't take it out from the shoe. Now we're talking. <laughs> Taking out the air. All right, so these boots have EVA foam or Ava foam, but just in the forefoot, I guess. Yeah. Ahora hacemos lo mismo. Lo mismo. Cortamos. Yep. Uh -huh. Cortamos. Okay. 
better. Way better. I'm a Derek. Yeah, that's the blue. I'm on Facebook. Well, Corey. I'm going to for myself. I'm actually really good at even screwing out nails because I always hit them at the wrong angle. Come on! What? Is it okay? Okay. Like that? Okay. Más duro. Más duro. Careful with your So we're currently in the midst of an argument about how we're going to go about attaching the uh, asshole to the upper rack. Right? So we've done the welt stitch, which is very laborious, but now there's an, another stitch. Uh, which goes through the outsole, and that's the one that you see running around the perimeter. That's, not, that's actually not the welt stitch when you see that on a, on a pair of boots, most boots anyway. The thing is, that's normally done with this machine, which will take like a few minutes. Done by hand, it takes a few hours. Uh, but I can't use the machine. But I could do the several hours it would take to stitch the outsole by hand. Ronald really thinks that I should let him use the machine and just save everyone a bit of time. What I'm going to try to do is... But what he's, so what we've decided is he's going to make the holes with the machine and then, because that'll, there's like, you know, hundreds of holes for it and that takes a lot of time. And then I can do the stitching through those holes by hand. That will save us some time. It will still take an extremely long time, but that will still nonetheless make me satisfied that I'm the one who's made the boot while also saving us many, many hours of labor. So many holes. That's a lot of holes. <laughs> That's a lot of holes. Well, I got my work cut out for me now. <laughs> Stitching. Um, it's, you know, you're not going to hand stitch the uppers. Um, there it is. Look at that. Yeah. <sighs> that was a hard day's work. Let's go get some steak. Agreed. <laughs> Good work. Man. All right. It's exciting. Uh, Look at that. Look at that. Woohoo. Yeah, it's very exciting. Beautiful. I just wish I'd like blue boots more. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last part of the sole bit with Ronald. Uh, we're going to be attaching the leather heel, so uh, the stacked heel here, uh, and then we're going to move on to the finishing, which is going to be the final part of this five day process. <laughs> this is roughing it up so it's easy to glue. When the leather is like flat like this, it's hard to stick stuff to it. So you make it rough and then it's easy to glue. Okay. It's day five now, by the way. I'm going to save it. Stacking heels is a lot more complicated than I thought it was going to be. So we've been like, so it's, it's a stacked leather heel, right? Which like makes the heel like more, more durable. It's easy to replace a bit of it if you mess up your heel or whatever. Um, we've been gluing pieces. I thought we'd just be gluing pieces, 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 and then like nailing them down. But we've been, once I got to the fourth 
fifth layer of leather in the heel, we've been like f filing it down and hammering it. Um, it looks like, yeah, we're <laughs> hammering it down. And this, this is so that it just holds the glue better. Um, but then we've been putting the rubber on and like testing it to see uh, if it stands flat properly on like a, on a flat surface like this thing down here, right? And it keeps being a little bit wobbly. So then we keep on cutting off bits from the heel. So it's a, uh, yeah, I, I thought this was gonna be the simple part, but like this, <laughs> even, you, you should all know, all of you with stacked leather heels, there's even a lot that goes into your stacked leather heels. But uh, I think now we just got more glue. Mas, mas, glue, what is glue again? Goma. Goma, mas goma? Okay, go well, <laughs> This is another thing we do every time we put a layer on. This is the final layer. You get this thing to mash it all together. So we've done that on every layer. If you, if you take off all the layers, you'll see like these marks on every layer of the heel. Uh, and then we usually take a knife and uh, you know correct it a little bit here. But it doesn't have to be perfect because later on we're gonna be sanding down the sides. Although given the sanding machine is a giant machine and given that messing it up can mess up the whole boot, I have a feeling that I won't be doing the sanding machine later. But uh, we'll, we'll see how we go. You need to be very careful to A, not cut the boot, the, the rest of the heel that you've so carefully been, been cutting. You also have to B, be careful not to cut your goddamn face off, which is something that I've risked a surprising amount of times for a craft that sounds so non-violent as boot making, but goddamn, the amount of times someone's warned me that the healthcare isn't good in Guatemala and that I shouldn't cut myself open. About 10 times a day, I've done with knives out here in Guatemala. I've been told that if I cut myself, that's probably going to be it for me. Fortunately, no mistakes yet, but you know what? It's pretty early in the day. There's plenty more time to uh, fatally injure myself. Yeah. I did it. Ahora vamos a poner a esta. Ya es terminado. Ah, nosotros estas terminamos. Ah, mi amigo. My friend. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias. All right. So, uh, what's the last step? The soles on. It seems like the boot's ready to go. So it's almost ready to go. There's one more step. Uh, we call it finishing. finishing. And yeah, really what it is, is the final shaping of the sole um, and then sanding everything down, polishing everything, giving it a really nice glossy look and uh, you should be good to go. Finishing, all right. So sanding it down. Yep. Making it nice and glossy. Yep and like final tweaks to make sure yep. it passes like the quality control test and all that kind of stuff. Final details. You know, what if I, the customer, don't actually care and I just want to wear my boots already? Uh, you're just going to get a pair of boots that doesn't look like it's finished. It's not going <laughs> to be an actual Atalante shoe. No, shooter. it's not ready yet. All right, okay. Well, let's, let's go meet the finishes then. All right, my, la matches. my last team, let's do it. So here we are, uh, back in the workshop for the final day. The first step is to put this uh, heel tap or, or cover over the heel. Um, and just to, disguise my handiwork. Exactly, yeah, make it look a little, uh, the whole thing's gonna get cleaned up in, in the finishing process. Alright. Yeah, and this is Gustavo. He's gonna be working with you <laughs> on the finishing process. Go. Okay, we need some Hello Ganador. Uh -huh. Okay. Esto se le aplica acá. Mm -hmm. Esto sirve para. Esto? Exactly. Okay. Esto sirve para que los poros abran de la tapa. So the pores open. Okay. Yeah. All right. We're opening the pores of the material. Oh, es demasiado. It's okay. No, está bien. Jose, is this just glue? Yeah. Okay, it's just glue. So I'm learning there's a lot more chemistry and flammable substances involved in, in this particular process. We just combine like a couple of different like weird chemicals to make like a super glue, like a super kind of glue, uh, so that the, uh, 
Yeah, so the heel will attach more easily. This is another kind of glue that we have just created by mixing chemicals. So we got two kinds of glue going on the heel. Two kinds of glue and like three or four different substances. El lule tiene que estar a 70 grados. Ya. Yeah. Esto ya le falta. So next we have to uh, we let the glue dry and now we're heating it up in this little oven thing here uh, because that makes it more effective like gluing. So uh, yeah, there's, there's an oven involved in this process as well. And a little uh, thermometer as well, which tells us when it's the precise perfect temperature to stick the heel on the boots. Ves tú, igual que las tapas. Yeah, so we're gonna have to cut it. Yeah. Wow. Alright, so this is to apply enough pressure on the uh, the gluey heel to stick real nice and good. 40 pounds of pressure is what we're doing. Bien? Sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's next? Okay, so it's not flat enough. Is that what he's saying? Yeah. Okay. It needs to be like more flat. More flat. Para eso vamos a agarrar esta. Okay. Acá. Entonces se va enderezando. ¿Aquí primero? Sí. ¿Como esta? Sí. All right. Okay, so we're unsure if it's a good idea for me to personally like send down the boot myself given that I am very very unskilled and there is a possibility that uh, you know I might completely ruin the boot, ruin the outside of the boot. All right, against Gustavo's wishes, but with the wishes of myself and Adelante management. <laughs> we wanna have, we wanna have my boot here, right? So I'm gonna do it. It's gonna suck and be ugly, but it's gonna be my boot. <laughs> Good. I think it's pretty good. It's <laughs> bonita. Sí, vamos a ver. Sí, más o menos. Más o menos. That's the best praise I've gotten throughout this entire process. If I can get a más o menos from a craftsman here, I feel like I've done a pretty good job.
Que no más práctica. Yeah, I need to practice, he says. I know, I know. Y pasamos a... Pasamos, let's go. I'm so happy that I did this. <laughs> <laughs> Lo llevo ahí. ¿Sale? Sí. ¿Sí? De línea, de línea. There's a lot of cow in this shoe. You're now surprisingly using a piece of glass from a mirror that we just broke to further smooth down this heel. <laughs> See, he's, he's dragging the knife over the stitches and uh, right alongside the leather. And those two things are very important and in some cases can just like ruin the boot entirely. I gotta say, the finishing, this is, uh, this is some high skill, high risk stuff. Removing the uh, like it's not it's not smoothing so much as like during the sanding process and everything uh, and all the rest of the finishing process you've got like sort of like a lip of leather sort of like curling up along here that needs to go and also like you want the different pieces of leather to be roughly the same thickness so like you see in some bits here there's a piece of leather that's been like. In some places it's flattened down, like here, and here, a lot more than there's in other places, like here. So yeah, you, it's, it's trying to make everything the same thickness, which uh, Gustavo makes look very easy, and as I'm sure you're, you all know by now, is actually very hard. But, see, I already messed it up. <laughs> uh -huh. Alright, here we go. One of the tricks here is that uh, it's the blunt side of the knife that's going along the leather of the, of the upper. So it's a, a little, it's less risky than I'm going to destroy the upper. Although not risk free. But we're not filming all of this, but you guys should really see the way that Gustavo laughs in disbelief every time he sees me trying to help finish this year. Ah. <laughs> Here we go. This is it. You ready? The, la the finishing of the finishing. The finishing of the finishing. Okay. What are the final steps, Mike, the CEO, COO of Adelante Shoes? All right. So essentially what we're going to do at this but, point. Wait, first of all, how beautiful is my finishing? So anyways, what we're going to do here... <laughs> no, it's looking pretty good, man. Um, so essentially what the, the last steps are, um, you're going to take a knife and kind of trim off all these these hairy bits you see here. Mm -hmm. Get that nice and smooth. Um, use it smoothish. smoothish. Smooth as we can get it. Um, you might want to put a little attention with a knife here to the heel so it's not angled like that. And then what you're going to do is put on some... I kind of thought that bit was over, but all right. Well, you know, depends on uh, <laughs> QC standards. I just say it's based on what the customer is satisfied with, and this guy fair enough likes you know his, what? like subpar boots. Hey, That's how know. I have a whole boot channel. <laughs> as long as you're proud of it, that's what counts. Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna apply some 
uh, shoe polish, a um, little bit of lime, and use some very fine sandpaper as well as some other tools to take down the edges. Get this nice and shiny. You'll polish it up. Mm -hmm. You'll be good to go. Did you say lime? Yes. Like tequila? Yes. Why is there lime on my boot? It's something to do with the reaction with the chemicals used in tanning. It gives it a little bit more of a sheen and impacts the finishing on the on the sole. It's something that I'd never seen before in uh -huh. shoemaking and I haven't seen today elsewhere. Um, but it's something that I've seen with our craftsmen, one of the skills or tricks or whatever that they picked up in their use of, of making shoes. All right, cool. So today I've been using a ovens and limes and th there's a lot of aspects of this that I was surprised by during during this but uh all right limes polished sandpaper lots of knives finished boot finished boot okay home stretch home stretch all right let's do it leave me to it <laughs> that's funny Was it a nice idea? It's organic. Is it? Tell them it's organic, man. It is. I guess it is organic, yeah, right? Yeah. Do you guys put pesticides in your trees? No. <laughs> Limón no empapa. No saca sarro o suela. It doesn't dry to something. Y esto solo hace que moje nomás. Entonces. Solo está mojado, pasa uno, encuentra seco otra vez, solo para, para que esto sea la, la cáscara, digamos, un poquito más, más suave. Um, and what are we saying about the lime? Is the lime, if you apply water, the suela can expand more. What's the suela? Uh, soling leather. Okay. Um, soling leather absorbs it more and it can expand, but with lime it doesn't do so. Okay. Yeah. All right, just shaving it. Sí, pero aquí. Come on. Hold on. This doesn't look anywhere near as dumb as when it came off the sanding machine. Yep. When it came off the sanding machine, it was really blocky, and I thought it was hilarious. Now it's now it's. Much more sophisticated. <laughs> it's harder to tell that an incompetent person did it. And I'm not sure how I feel about that. <laughs> so I don't know if you know that, notice that all the chairs are really, really short. Like at Norm's workshop. Exactly. So the main reason for that is so you can get that perpendicular structure in your legs because you do most of the work on your legs and not actually on the table. Oh. Yeah, you know, I've had multiple people, I've been posting stuff on my YouTube and Instagram from all here. And yeah, more than one person has said, why do they always have such little chairs yeah. in the places they're making boots? Yep, it's because you're working on your lap. Right? You're not trying to infantilize and demean your workers. No. You're in fact, you're in fact giving them the tools they need Correct. to use their, their legs the right way. Master <laughs> man, uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take more or less. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Okay. What are you saying? So the cleans up any of the dirt and dirtiness on the sole. Okay. In circular. Circular. It's called manguillo. It's called a manguillo. A manguillo. Uh huh. Okay. The purpose of this is to like sort of it's like ironing out the sole basically. It's like getting rid of the creases and the folds, and by that I mean getting rid of all or as much of my mistakes as possible. <laughs> Sí, para sacar filos. ¿Cómo es eso? Sí, es para intentar que quede brilloso y liso. Liso es like slippery, smooth. smooth. Yeah. 
తిరుగులు Más o menos. Pete, más o menos. Más o menos. Más o menos. We got there. That's all we ever wanted. All I wanted was a passing grade. Exactly. Más o menos. Más o menos. Más o menos. That's it. That's the name of the food. <laughs> there, okay, so there's we're gonna we'll walk the walk the customer through it. So here is a perfect we're calling it the Masomeno spoon. Here is a perfect one. You gotta come come closer, come closer. This one's mine. Okay, so at first they look identical, of course. Looking from the side, perfect stitching, very ragged ass stitching on <laughs> this one. Sole, clean, smooth, beautiful. Mine, hammer marks all over it. Burnt out brand, uneven 11D. This one, beautiful, pristine. The heel, almost hexagonal in its curvature on this one. This one, beautifully. Perfectly smooth and finished. The stitching here. <laughs> this is really, it's very <laughs> bumpy on my. This one, beautiful, smooth, perfect. And then, um, what was the last thing I was gonna show? Oh yeah, and then the very, the, the best part of it. Put these two, heel to heel. And mine is, the, this one's mine is gigantic, a million times bigger because I was too gun shy in the sanding machine. <laughs> oh, and also there's, there's more as well. There's, there's also multiple nicks on the leather. There we go. That's from the sanding machine. Uh, what else have we got? These scratches here. That's from me trying to sew through there. Here as well, that's also from the sanding machine. But again, you don't want a perfect child. You just want a beautiful child. <laughs> and I think I did it. <laughs> self-respect. <laughs> that looks super good though. That's it. With what you're wearing. The blue, white, blue. Yeah, fortunately, I was, uh, I brought the right clothes for it. I do it on my videos. This one makes it real big. There we go. 